What is up everybody and welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we are having an introduction to column method of multiplication. Let's go. Okay, so the steps we're going to follow today are we're going to include our column titles, we're going to start with the smallest value, and we're going to do each part separately. Let's see what that looks like. Now, for those of you that have followed along this series, you will know that before column method, we have grid method or box method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do grid method on this side here at the same time so you can see how they're linked. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is put my column titles. So here I have ones and tens and then the same on the other number. So I know I'm going to need ones and tens. Then I'm going to put my 25 in place and my 48 underneath it because we're now working in columns. So all my ones are going to go together and all my tens are going to go in the same columns. Now I'm going to put my equals sign and I'm ready to begin. But let's have a look what I would have done with grid method. Grid method, I would have put my boxes just like this and I would have taken my 25 and split it into a 20 and a 5 and I would have split my 48 into a 40 and an 8. Put my multiplication sign in the corner and I'm ready to begin. If you've never seen this grid method before, I would highly recommend going and finding that video on this channel to try and help you first, because grid method is a really good way of understanding multiplication. Now my second step was to start with the smallest value. Well, the smallest value is gonna be in our ones, and we're gonna start here with this eight on the bottom row. And the first question that I'm gonna answer is the smallest value multiplied by the smallest value in the next number, which is five. So this question is gonna answer eight times five. Well, guess what? Look at my grid method. I can see I'm gonna have a question that's gonna be eight times five. So this method of column method, which is the expanded method, is very similar to grid method. I'm doing the individual parts of the question. So what's the answer to eight times five? Eight times five is 40. So I'm gonna put that on that row, and I'm gonna also put it in this section of the box. And now I'm gonna do my next question, which is eight times this two. But remember, that's not a two because it's in the tens column, it's a 20. Eight times 20. Where can I find eight times 20 on this box? Well, I can see eight times 20, so it's gonna be putting the answer in this box here. Well, what's the answer to eight times 20? Well, that's pretty difficult. Eight times 20 is a large number. So I can see this 20 has a zero in it, so I can get rid of that zero and just do eight times two. Eight times two is 16, but then because I forgot about that zero, I'm gonna to need to put it back at the end, so my answer is 160. Let's think about what we just did. We just made the question 10 times smaller by getting rid of the zero, and then we made it 10 times larger by putting it back at the end. So all is fair. So my answer to eight times 20 is 160. Put it in there, and I'm gonna put it in my grid method as well. Now I finish with my eight, because I've done eight times five and eight times 20. I'm now gonna move on to my four. But remember, it's not a four, it's a 40. So my first question is 40 multiplied by this five. I'll put it here, 40 times five. And I'm gonna use the same logic. I'm gonna forget about this zero for a moment and just do four times five is 20, and then put back my zero at the end. So my answer is 200. Where can I see 40 times five here? Well, I can see it in the grid method over in this box just here. And then my final question is gonna be this 40 times the 20. It looks like four times two, but remember they are both in the tens column, so it's 40 times 20. So I'm gonna put it here, 40 times 20 equals. Now, here's the hardest one because I have two zeros. So if I want to ignore them both, I can put a line through one and two, but I now need to remember that I've ignored two zeros. Now I just do four times two, which is eight, but I'm gonna put back my two zeros because I took two away, so I made it 100 times smaller, so my answer needs to be 100 times larger, so my answer is 800. Awesome. Where does that go in the grid method? Well, in the only box that's left. So we can see the relationship between grid method and this expanded column method. We are simply just doing it in a different style. But am I finished? No, because I've just multiplied all the little individual parts. To get my final answer, I need to add it all up. 
And this is where column method is much quicker because it's already in columns waiting to be added up. Over in my grid method, I've got to start a new question with 800 plus 200 plus 160 plus 40. Okay, so it's an extra step. But over here, I can see that's all ready for me, ready to go. So let's start with my smallest value. I'm going to add up my ones first of all. And remember, we're not going to add up this part because that's the question. We're simply going to add up this section here being our individual answers. So looking in the ones column, first of all, I have zero, 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 zero. So it'll give me an answer of zero. In the tens column, I have four and six, which is 10. So carry a one across, put my zero in place. And then in my hundreds column now, I have a one and a one, a two and an eight which equals 12, I have nowhere else to go, so I'm just put all my answer into the answer row, making my answer 1,200. Let's see if I get the same answer over in grid method. Zero, 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 and zero is zero. Six and four is 10. Eight plus two is one, plus my two ones is 12. Same answer, 1,200. So we can hopefully see the relationship between grid method and column method. This is the expanded column method, so it's the first stage of column method. The next stage, we will make this even quicker. So what do we need to remember? First, don't forget your column titles. Then we'll start with our smallest value. Remember, we are multiplying the separate parts, and then we mustn't forget to add it all up at the end. So here's a question for you. Have a go at solving this question, 35 times 26. Press pause on the video now and put your answer in the comment section. If you wanna be a superstar, try and do grid method and expanded method next to each other. If you need some help, rewind and watch this video again so you really fully understand it. And there we go. This was an introduction to column method multiplication. If you've learned something today, head on over to themathshelter.com where you're gonna find loads more videos for your year group. But for now guys, see you in another video. Peace out.